So, are you ready to take down Russ Feingold? Yeah. Yeah. You ready to take back your country? Yeah. All right. We're going to do that this November. Let me hit you with the little polling numbers here that just came out this week. I'm Terrence Wall, running for the U.S. Senate. And some very interesting uh, data that's been tracking all along for the last uh, six months. 68% of the people in this state think the country's on the wrong track. 68%. Of undecided voters, 64% will not vote for Russ Feingold. Think about that. That's where the golden retriever comes in. <laughs> and uh, of undecided voters, I'm leading Russ Feingold 36 to 33%. In the Appleton Green Bay market, I'm only three points behind. That's the margin of error. And overall, statewide, we've narrowed the gap consistently. We're down only seven points, which is unbelievable for eight months in advance of an election. Seven points. But more importantly, in the Milwaukee media market, which is Milwaukee, Racine, Kenosha, Waukesha, you know, Mequon, in the Milwaukee media market, I am leading Russ Feingold by nine points. So we can do this. Russ is vulnerable. He's going to be transitioning to the private sector this November. And we're going to help him, right? All right. So for those of you who don't know me, a few of you have heard the stump speech. I'm going to abbreviate that. I'm Terrence Wall. I uh, have a wife, two children. You can see their pictures on the literature there. I came from a very large family of 11 children. My wife's from 10 children. And uh, the kids have 36 aunts and uncles. I've been working since I was 11. I worked my way through the University of Wisconsin to pay for tuition. That's where I started my business. Uh, I bought an apartment building out of foreclosure and cleaned it up, painted the walls and picked up the litter and rented the apartments and cleaned the toilets myself. And over the last 20 years, I've just continued to build office buildings and uh, built a small business. And I've been talking to hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands by now, small business owners across the state of Wisconsin, and they're really hurting. You know, I frankly, I wonder how some of them are e even going to survive this year until we can get some changes in place in 2011. And that's what Russ Feingold doesn't get. He has been on the taxpayer's dole since 1982. 1982. He's never worked in a business. He never had to make payroll. He doesn't understand how to create jobs. I have attracted over 10,000 jobs to the properties that I own. And we've created thousands of jobs, literally created thousands of jobs in Wisconsin, directly in the construction that we do, as well as in the subcontractors and the supply chain, whether it's buying drywall, buying rebar, buying plumbing fixtures from Kohler, Wisconsin. It's all about small businesses and helping them grow in Wisconsin. We're a very unique state in that sense. And these people in Washington and Madison are killing small business. Washington has coming for you, I mean, we want to create jobs this year. And instead of creating jobs, they're focused on taking over the healthcare industry. Now let's just look at the laundry list of things they've done in the last 12 months. They took over the home mortgage industry through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They own it. They took over the car auto manufacturers. They took over the banks. They took over the insurance industry, the most of it through AIG. And they took over, in October, the student loan industry, 85% of it. Now they want to go take over 17% of our economy in the healthcare industry. Then they're going to go for cap and trade and take over the energy industry. Then they're going to control business by card check through the unions. They're going to control business. That's their strong arming technique. And after that, who knows what else? And meanwhile, they're funding, you know, offshore drilling in Brazil, but they're rejecting, you know, we're spending $2 billion to fund offshore drilling off of Brazil, but we're not spending the money to do offshore drilling in the United States to help us get off of foreign oil. It's crazy. Everything's upside down. Yep, up is down, left is right. Nothing makes sense anymore. And next year, the income tax goes up, the capital gains tax goes up, the estate tax skyrockets. And these things are going to kill small businesses. Because as you know, small businesses declare their business income on their personal tax return. Which means when Obama says we're going to tax the rich over 250000 that's every small business. You know, and those people aren't taking that money and putting it in their pocket. They're taking that capital and reinvesting it to create jobs like I do. They're reinvesting it to grow their business, to create and grow Wisconsin. They're helping families after family of some other small businesses grow their businesses. And Russ Feingold doesn't get that. Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and President Obama and Russ Feingold are interested in more and more government control of our economy and of our lives, which I am not in favor of. 
So I am intending to go there and stop this. One person, you know, people have asked me, what can you do? You're just one person. Well, now I can point to Scott Brown, and I can say, one person can make a difference. One person has stopped this health care bill. Now, Russ Feingold has said he's been against reconciliation for all these years, and now he's flip-flopped. As of last week, he said he would use reconciliation to ram the health care bill through, in spite of what the American people say. He's going to jam it down our throats because that's, their belief is that if they can get this passed, we won't be able to undo it. Oh, trust me, I'll figure out a way. I'm a creative guy. We'll figure out a way to undo it. <laughs> I'm not afraid to repeal things either. We need to cut back on regulation, cut back on the income tax, the capital gains tax, and the estate back tax. We need to get back to local control, local decision-making, smaller government, and less intrusion in our private lives so that we can get back to being Americans. So I want to get to Washington not because I like Washington, but because I want to help this country. As an Eagle Scout, as someone who grew up under Ronald Reagan, you know, as somebody who'd lived the American dream, you know, I built a, building, uh, built a business from scratch and have had successful businesses provided for my family and me. And now I want to give something back. We've got to help save this country and save it from going off a financial cliff. You don't know, but in the recent bond offering by the Treasury Department, the Chinese did not buy as many bonds as they normally have. Japan became the number one buyer. And guess what? The U.S. Treasury had to buy billions of dollars of unsold bonds. I've been warning about this for the last six months, and it just happened. And it's very, very easy for this country to collapse financially if the American government continues to issue the amount of debt that it wants to issue and there are no buyers. Well, it just, it just happened. There were not enough buyers for the 30-year Treasury bond. I know that's esoteric, but that will go to driving the entire worldwide economy if that situation gets worse over the next few months. We've got the possibility of sovereign default with Greece and other countries. We're talking about some very serious and complicated problems in this world going forward. It's going to take somebody who understands finance, understands the economy, understands how to create jobs, and is not afraid to say no to the people in Washington. No, we're not going to go and have bigger government. No, we're not going to do any more spending. We're going to pay down the debt. We're going to grow the economy, and that's the only way we're going to pay down the debt, by getting more people to work. Raising taxes and having fewer people working is not an equation that goes to paying down the national debt, and they don't get that. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. I'm used to fighting the progressives in Madison. I fought them back and defeated them and gotten them thrown out of Madison. I got conservatives elected to Madison City Council when everyone said it couldn't be done. Well, I tell you, we can do it in Madison, and we can do it in Washington. <clears throat> and lastly, for those of you, some of you know this joke, but for those of you who don't know, Russ Feingold is my tenant. <laughs> he is... Where's the cue? There you go. <laughs> right. Well, wait till I put the yard signs up in front of his office. <laughs> There's something deliciously sweet about having him write that check every month for his office. But uh, as I like to say, even though he has a lease and I can't evict him from my office building, which, you know, I like collecting the rent from him, we will evict him from the United States Senate this November. Thank you.